Welcome to Social Allo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. There are times when you will receive a clear prophecy. When it comes to pass, it may not be exactly what you thought it was going to be. And in some cases, when you receive a prophecy, you may want to know the five W's and the how. But Lord may only give you a piece of information and the rest of it you may be unsure and for example in 1 Corinthians 13 verses 9 and 10 states for we know in part and we prophesy in part but when that which is perfect is come then that which is in part shall be done away so there are times when we truly don't know what the fulfillment of a prophecy is going to look like we truly don't know well what happens when your prophecy runs into trouble where you, you may see something come to pass but then it's like it starts slipping away or you may doubt did it really come to pass and we look at a, an example with John the Baptist the prophet who was sent to pave the way for Jesus and starting John 1 verse 29 the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world this is he of whom I said after me cometh a man which is preferred before me for he was before me and I knew him not but that he should be made manifest to Israel therefore I am come therefore am I come baptizing with water and John bear record saying I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him and I knew him not but he that sent me to baptize with water the same said unto me upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. So even though um, Jesus and John were cousins, John didn't know him. But the Lord had made it clear who the Lamb of God was. A clear sign. In some cases you may have that you may have the prophecy and the Lord may tell you that this will be the sign that the thing, this thing will come to pass. For example, when the Lord sent Isaiah to King Hezekiah to tell him to get his house in order, that he was going to die. But Hezekiah repented, so the Lord sent Isaiah back to let the king know that he was going to extend his life by 15 years. And as a sign, he was going to have the sundial go back basically 10 degrees. That was a sign. And another sign was basically when King Hezekiah was healed. Those were clear signs of what the Lord had said, or what the prophet had said, had come from the Lord and they would come to pass. So here you have John the Baptist saying that he saw the Spirit descending from heaven on Jesus like a dove. And verse 33, And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. So John had the signs that Jesus was the Son of God. Now why am I saying all this? It's kind of like over and over again. John had no doubts when he saw Jesus that he was the Son of God. And again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him, and they followed Jesus. So John was convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus was the Son of God. Convinced. He knew it heard from the Lord. He knew the signs to look out for. Jesus fulfilled those signs. So John was confident that Jesus was the Son of God. 
John was confident that Jesus was the Son of God. But the devil, he likes to mess with us. He likes to put us in difficult situations to test our faith. So remember everything I said about John being absolutely convinced that Jesus was the Son of God. We look at the Gospel according to Matthew in the 11th chapter, starting first verse. And it came to pass, when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, he departed thence to teach and preach in their cities. And when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples. So the conditions had changed. John had baptized Jesus, said that he was a Lamb of God. In the book of John, we in the first chapter, John the Baptist said it twice, that Jesus was the Lamb of God, the Son of God. But now John was in prison, so the conditions had changed. Something happened to test his faith. And said unto him, Art, let me read that again. And when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? <laughs> I laugh, but I'm not laughing at John. It is about how you get the sure word from the Lord. And things will change to cause you to doubt. John was the one who proclaimed that Jesus was the Son of God. But now he was in prison and he started wondering, is this truly the Son of God? The prophecy had been fulfilled, but now because the conditions changed, and especially you can imagine being in prison, particularly if he was in solitary confinement, how the devil basically had untethered access to him. He was alone, isolated. And he started doubting if Jesus was the Son of God. So he had his disciples say, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? That is a sad position to be in. To know that the Lord has promised you something. But because conditions change, that doubt comes in. When Jesus went to his hometown, the Bible states that he could do very few miracles because of their unbelief. A lot of times the devil will try to get you into a state of unbelief in an attempt to block your blessings. To cause you to lose faith in the Lord. Where 1 Corinthians 13 verse 9 states, that we know in part and we prophesy in part. If you're the prophetic voice, it may start making you doubt if what you said was actually from the Lord. If you receive their prophecy, it may make you start doubt if what you heard was from the Lord. John has his disciples asked, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? John's faith had been put to the test. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again these things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. The poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And they departed, and as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in the king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he 
of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. I pause for a second where it talks about the kingdom of heaven suffering violence, and the violence take it by force. There are times when the devil will try to snatch a prophecy out of your hand. Don't let him. I'll pause for a second because there are false prophets, there are false prophecies where those things will fail to come to pass. But when a word is from the Lord, when a message is from the Lord, when a prophecy is from the Lord, if anything goes wrong, you can do what John did. John went back to the Lord and the Lord reassured him that yes, he is the fulfillment of the prophets, of the prophecy. So if anything goes awry with a prophecy, take it back to the Lord and let him confirm those words to you. Or, in some cases, he will let you know that you have been deceived. That was a false prophecy. That was a thing that he had not spoken. And in that case, you have to accept it and move on and repent. So Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of violence, or the kingdom of heaven, suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Do not allow the devil to snatch a prophecy from you, a promise from the Lord. Yes, times will come where you may be in enduring suffering, isolation, darkness, periods of doubt, like John the Baptist did. But if something's from the Lord, he will reassure you. If something's from the Lord, he will bring it to pass. And it continues. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if ye will receive it, this is Elias, meaning Elijah, which was for to come. He that hath ears to ear, let him ear. So in John 1, we see in two occasions, John said that Jesus was the Lamb of God. And he mentioned about a sign from the Heavenly Father to let him know how to identify Jesus, the one in whom the Holy Spirit of the Lord would descend and rest. It would remain on him. But in times of trouble, John started doubting, but the Lord reassured him that yes, he was and is the Messiah. When a prophecy is true from the Lord, the devil is going to do his best to try to make you seem, make it seem as if the Lord had not spoken. And there are times when a prophecy will come to pass and the devil will try to make it seem as if it is not from the Lord. In some cases, Actually, I'll leave it alone. That is for another time. But please, develop a relationship with the Lord. And try your best that once you know that something's from the Lord, do not let the enemy sow seeds of discord. Do not let him start causing you to disbelieve what you once firmly believed. Hold on to the promises of the Lord until he brings them to pass. John was in a bad situation where he started doubting. 
when you know the Lord has spoken, do not doubt. Rebuke the devil.